<laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, let's, um, I guess I'm ready if you're ready. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Well, hey, welcome back to another episode of Road Noise. Um, Thank you. But, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. You weren't talking to me. <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah. Dad, I'm glad. You, I'm glad you're here because you're the one driving this thing. So if you're not behind the wheel, then we're all in trouble here. Um, all right. Yeah. Is there anybody else out there? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, um, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to the conversation tonight and I'm always looking forward to these conversations. And our hope is that they, that these find, that you'll find these encouraging to maybe take something away from them as um, just encouraging to you and your, in your walk with Christ. And um, as you listen to these stories and reflect on them with us, that there's a little bit of takeaway for you as well. Um, personally, I know that there's, uh, it's a bit of trip, trip down memory lane, which is always good and rich, rich for me, but I'm always challenged too to, um, as I'm hearing these testimonies of God's faithfulness over 50 years, they've definitely impacted me over the over the last uh, however long we've been recording these. Dad, it's been yeah, it's been a few minutes. So um, yeah, I hope they I hope you find these encouraging as well. And um, yeah, and if if they're an encouragement to you, if you're having fun uh, putting on some miles with us, go ahead and uh, leave a, a review for us and rate us if you if you're willing to do that. And of course, the best. Best thing you could do for to fuel these conversations going forward is to share it with a friend, and we'd appreciate that. So, well, with that, then uh, let's go ahead and jump in. Where are we? Where are we All us right. Today? Well, um, let's uh, head down the road to do a vacation Bible school. It's an evening vacation Bible school, um, and um, a few states away. But uh, we were there with the bus and our entire. Um, uh, group of teenagers, summer missionaries um, that were traveling with us that summer. And um, this particular church, we're doing an evening vacation Bible school. And when we first started, um, you know, many years you know, prior to this, uh, vacation Bible schools were typically running for a week long. And then there, or I'm sorry, two weeks long. And then there was a transition um, that went from two weeks to one week, but typically they were all morning vacation Bible schools. But over the course of time, um, those morning vacation Bible schools became difficult because over that period of time, it was very difficult to find workers because the ladies in the house had um, started working outside the home and weren't available to do vacation Bible schools in the morning. Well, anyway, so at that point, um, uh, churches kind of migrated and started having evening vacation Bible schools for one week. And that's where we were um, kind of history-wise uh, when we were at this church, an evening vacation Bible school. And this church, like um, a lot of the churches back then, would provide an evening meal for all of us. And they would have a schedule set up and um, uh, different families uh, from the church would sign up to host the entire team <laughs> for the evening meal. And there's nothing wrong with that. And the food was always good. But I'll have to admit that um, if you're having supper at somebody's house and you have to leave there, get back to the church and do an evening vacation Bible school, sometimes that can cause some stress because you get there and the food's not ready and okay so you sit around you wait finally you sit down and you eat but you got to hurry up and eat because you know you got to get back to the church and if you don't get back in time I mean kids are going to be lining up outside and you still have to I mean yeah so it can put some pressure on but in this particular home everything was going on schedule and if we sit down and eat, we'll be just fine. We'll be have plenty of time to get back to the church, plenty of time to get set up. Everything's going fine. And so in that regards, it's gonna be a great evening. Well, it comes time to uh, eat and they had a large table in a fairly formal uh, dining room and the entire team were all sitting around this huge table. And it didn't take long until I kind of picked up on the fact that something was missing. 
um, I didn't say anything, but I kind of glanced around the table and I noticed that there was no glasses or cups or anything to drink out of. You know, we had the plates, the silverware and all the fancy napkins. And I mean, it was, but nothing to drink out of. So I kind of figured, well, after uh, we pray, um, the host will probably ask uh, everybody what they would like to drink. And then they'll fill those requests and well, I'll have something to drink. What ended up, that wasn't the case at all. And nobody said anything for quite some time until one of our team members, one of the teenagers, um, you know, partially through the meal, um, mentioned the fact that they didn't have anything to drink. And that's when we got an education. We found out that um, you're not supposed to drink while you eat your evening meal. You only drink water and not until after the meal is finished. Silly me, I didn't know that. I hadn't instructed my family or the teenagers about that. This was a new rule <laughs> for you, me. You, you've been doing it wrong for <laughs> decades by now. Yes. I mean, I had been prior to this, I had been drinking something probably several times during the course of a meal and never thought anything about it, only to find out I've been doing it wrong. Well, I have to admit, I've been doing it wrong ever since the meal at this particular house. <laughs> I've gone back to my old habits. But that wasn't the only thing that we got educated on that evening. It seems like uh, the lady that was hosting us had been born and raised in another country. And I don't remember what country that was. I believe it was a European country. But uh, she said that um, when she did come to the States, and I believe that was after she was married, um, so um, what her husband might have been in the military over there, whatever the situation was. But anyways, uh, after she was married, um, married an American, she comes to the United States. And was she ever shocked to find out what we ate here? We did not eat the same type of food that she had grown up on and was accustomed to. And it was very, very difficult for this woman to accept the fact that Americans ate pig food. Yes, we ate pig food. Um, that's corn. Yeah, the country she came from, only the pigs would eat corn. A human being would never consider, okay, so I'd been doing it wrong because, well, I'll just be perfectly honest. Uh, corn on the cob with lots of melted butter and salt and pepper, my oh my. You know, and here we are uh, this time of year when it's coming on and uh, the stands are sh showing up all along the side of the road now. And yeah, y you can be sure that we're going to stop and get some pig food and we'll enjoy some at our house. Well, anyway, so by the time we uh, were at uh, this particular house, uh, she had been in the States for a while and had accepted the fact that um, it is OK to eat pig food. But, you know, that uh, whole story kind of reminded me of um, the story of the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15, when the prodigal son finds himself eating with the pigs and actually eating, I guess it had been corn. And so as uh, you read that story in Luke chapter 15, um, next time, think about that. Are you in a country where it's OK to eat pig food? Uh, I'm sure that uh, for this prodigal son, uh, first of all, this Jewish boy, spending his time in with the pigs that had to have been a humiliating thing just in and of itself but not just to be with the pigs but then to have to eat what they were eating how low can you go yeah <laughs> yeah yeah that, that definitely gives like a like a, a new meaning to uh, sitting around the dinner table and not not wanting to eat corn because of you know that's what pigs eat um, yeah, that's, that's pretty great. Um, it, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had a thought there and, and it's, it, it's escaping me, but, um, it's, it was kind of related to the, to the, um, passage in Acts where, 
where Peter is getting a revelation about what's clean and unclean or what's, you know, holy or common and gets told <laughs> to, you know, in, in his vision to go kill and eat the things that were uh, previously considered unclean. And um, yeah, it also kind of just, it just, uh, for me anyways, hearing the stories, like how many, how much of our like normal day-to-day -day living is just a, a byproduct of the culture or customs that we grow up in. It's kind of like just this notion of just living on like autopilot. And for this lady, she had probably never even considered eating corn until, you know, coming to the U.S. And now I was faced with this idea that <laughs> that she could or people did or... <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I, right, but you, you still can't have anything to drink and, until yeah, after right. you finish your corn on the cob. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's probably only water too. Um, yes. Yeah. No, I, you know, I, the thought that that was coming to me earlier is, um, is if for friends who don't know where you're at, you're just what, 30 minutes north of cereal city usa we're the home of the cornflakes <laughs> so we got a whole industry well, now, is like shaped around this you know now that you brought that subject up um uh, we've been here at this location what is it i think it's 41 years if, mm -hmm. if i'm not mistaken now well um shortly after we moved here um i noticed the neighbor was on the other side of the fence uh, working in the field and the field is full of corn. If I look out the window right now, I mean, yeah, I mean, the corn is on. And this was probably our first, maybe the second year that we were here, but it was real early. And so I walked out to the fence uh, you know, to say hi to him. And he walked over and so we're standing there talking about the corn. And silly me, I asked about the corn and he told me that um, all that corn was going to Kellogg's just south of us. Mm -hmm. And that would uh, eventually be corn flakes. And me not knowing anything about corn or what they make corn flakes out of, <clears throat> I assumed that it was sweet corn. And I mentioned that to him and he's like, oh no, no, this is field corn. And I'm like, what? You mean that box of cornflakes that tastes so, well, it really tastes good, the frosted cornflakes? Right. You mean those frosted cornflakes are field corn? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so. Um, Pig food. Uh, that's what it is, and we're surrounded <laughs> by cornflakes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's great. Well. um, Pig yeah, food. <laughs> pig food, yep, yep. Well, this, uh, this has been a little a fun trip down down memory lane here and um, maybe it's a good place to put it in park and we'll pick it up again next week yeah let's go get something to eat yeah <laughs> some <laughs> corn on the cob or what else or a blt or, or blt there we go yeah <laughs>